compilation okay. are you breaking? Because there was one when I was playing with the Blazers. Okay. And I went after a riff, and uh, Rashid Wallace held me back. How I run. It's great. That's awesome. Did you have a picture of that moment? Went in Portland. Rashid holding you back? I know who he thinks this is out tonight. Do you guys have a game that you're targeting on this trip? Uh, he won't. He won't play. Uh, in Florida. Yeah, he won't play in Orlando either. And then we're hoping. For, what's the next one? Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, let's okay, say we're second hoping. out of back to back Monday. Yeah, we, we're hopeful for Atlanta. But we'll, we'll see. But you guys are still looking for the first back-to-back -back wins of the season. How do you get momentum coming off the Chicago win? Well, we we have to look at uh, what, what we did well. Um, and we've got to try to come in here where Miami's undefeated and, you know, one of the hardest playing teams in the league. We've got to be able to withstand their defensive pressure and execute and do the things that, uh, that help us get the win the other night. So we're a really young team. But we're learning a lot and we're getting better. It's been really fun to, to see the growth. Uh, but this will be a big test tonight. Coach, you've talked about not getting comfortable with losing. Um, can you talk about how you do that and how you do that for some of these players that really haven't experienced that kind of adversity and this kind of record this early in the season? Well, I think there's a balance to be struck um, between uh, you can't make it miserable every day. I mean, the players have to look forward to coming to work every day. Uh, and yet, you can't come in pretending that everything's great when you're four and fifteen. So you have to find that balance, and uh, that means accentuating the things uh, that we need to work on, uh, watching a lot of film, teaching, growing, still enjoying yourself, still having fun, but with a, a focus that's necessary to win a game. Is there anything you've seen out of Draymond during this adversity? Yeah, that you guys Draymond's are been uh, very vocal. Uh, the guys are very receptive to his advice, so it's a good dynamic. You know, uh, I don't even think they have a roster spot and a little bit of tax issues, but are you surprised at all to see Kendrick Dunn become what he's been yeah. here? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he's, he's putting up huge numbers. And, uh, more, than, more than anything, I'm just really happy for him. You know, uh, anytime you see a guy work his way up in the G League and then uh, get his chance and make the most of it, uh, it's... Uh, it's awesome to see, and uh, you know, we had Kendrick in, in training camp last year, and we didn't have a spot for him. We, our roster was filled up, and we had a lot of guys playing ahead of him, so he wouldn't have gotten the opportunity with us. I think Miami was really smart you know, with what they did last year. Sign, I think they signed him on the last day of the season, and, and uh, they saw something they, they liked, and obviously they were right. And, uh, Kendrick has made the most of it, so it's a great story. What did you, what what did you like about it? I mean, I mean obviously, he, there was depth. I mean, he wasn't going to make your team, but what, yeah. what did you like when you had him? Well, he was a big scorer uh, for Santa Cruz, uh, dynamic scorer, kind of a combo guard. And, and uh, so our, our G League coaches really liked him. Uh, our scouts liked him, and uh, that's why we had him. But again, everything in this league is, is timing, both for the player and for the team. And uh, the last couple of years, we, we didn't have any room just with the team we had. Ironically, uh, we had room this year, but Miami beat us to the punch, so I uh, give credit to them. Coach, can you talk about just the durability of the season's past compared to this year? Is that something that maybe fans might overlook a little bit? As, durability? Yeah, the, as far as the durability that your roster has had and not getting injured as much as so far as this year. Uh, can you just talk about that dynamic of, of winning and success in the NBA? Well, I, you know, I think we all try to do the best job we can in the, in the season of uh, you know, giving our players rest when they need it, um, hiring a good training staff to uh, work on strength and conditioning. And, and so you try to do everything you can to build that uh, durability and, and get your team to be able to sustain itself during the season. And then there's just stuff that happens that you can't account for. And uh, I've been a part of a few seasons as a player uh, and a GM where you, know, you just had a ton of injuries and no matter what you did, it seemed like you were always swimming upstream and that's kind of been the case this year. Uh, it's just been a rash of, of injuries that have uh, put us in a tough spot and uh, is what it is. So you just keep keep fighting. It's a great opportunity for a lot of young players. and. and uh, and in a lot of ways, it's fun to see them grow and to see them seize the opportunity because it, 
you know, their their careers are changing, their lives are changing, and uh, it's frustrating to lose, but it's fun to see their growth. What did you learn from these first? I mean, it's the first quarter of the season has been much different for you too. Yeah. What have you learned from this process? That uh, <clears throat> I think I've learned how to be a better coach. Honestly, I think uh, you know I, I haven't had to coach a situation like this, and it's been a good reminder that you know, every circumstance is different, every year is different. Uh, the last five years, we've been a championship contender, so it meant that I had to manage the team through the season, prepare for the playoffs, and uh, try to get guys rest when we could. This is much more about teaching and um, developing young players. And, um, so it's a good reminder of just how much detail is involved. And I think I've, uh, I'm have lucky I've got a great staff. Mike Brown and Ron Adams have really helped me <clears throat> this year because they've both been through this before, coaching really young teams uh, that have struggled. And, uh, so I'm learning a lot myself, and it's a good uh, good uh, dynamic for for my own career to, to go through this and to feel it. The Heat start games really well. They've had some high-scoring first quarters. When you guys are starting your first game of a road trip in Fun City, how do you match that intensity up at the start? Yeah, we're. Uh, that's what I'm most concerned about tonight is uh, the beginning of the game. You know, it's. I, I always worry about shooting the ball on the first game of a cross country trip. You know, everybody's a little sluggish, um, and you know we don't have a great uh, perimeter shooting team, especially our starting lineup. Uh, anyway, and you worry about you know you're, you get off a plane, you have a Thanksgiving meal. Come in and playing a team I think that's seven and zero uh, and shoots the lights out. Yeah, I worry about the beginning of the game for sure. So uh, it means we can't make mistakes, we can't turn it over. We've got to defend well with purpose and uh, survive the first part of the game and settle in, get our legs underneath us. You saw the schedule. Right? Schedule stinks for everybody sometimes. But like home Wednesday night, holiday, flying three thousand miles. Yeah. You cringe a little at that one. Yeah, yeah. The league, the league has done a <coughs> really good job the last few years. <coughs> excuse me, of making the schedule easier for everybody. Um, this one wasn't great. You know, I don't mind flying on Thanksgiving, but if you can just fly, you know, an hour or two, you still get to enjoy the day with your family. And uh, nobody got to do that last night, so that was tough. But I know other teams are on the road. Already have been on the road. Chicago was. You know, in the Bay Area the day before Thanksgiving, and I think they flew to Portland. And so it's part of being in the NBA. You just you got to deal have, with it. You guys have tra traveled a lot more. You're uh, injured guys on this trip. Um, is it? Is there closer? Like what? what uh, is <clears throat> well, I think they're they're all closer. Looney's close. Um, D'Angelo and uh, and Jacob Evans are much closer. And, uh, it just felt like the right thing to do to bring them on this trip. Rick Celebrini's on the trip, so they came in. Our, young, our, our injured guys came in an hour before uh, the rest of the team and um, got their work in. It's, uh, I think it's smart just to, to have them with us and to reincorporate them. Do you, do you think, like, you know, you mentioned the Angel Jacob, like, practice on this trip potentially? Yeah, Jacob just went through the full shooter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, we talk about Looney, maybe. Honestly, I, d I don't don't know. Um, I just talked to Drew Yoder about it, and he said uh, Jacob's good to to practice tomorrow and uh, and to do shoot around against Orlando. Actually, we don't have a shoot around with, uh, in Orlando, so practice tomorrow and then uh, see how he responds yeah. to that, and then we'll see how he's doing. Uh, and then with D'Angelo, I know we've seen him do a bunch of his lefty stuff, but can he even can he do stuff with the right? Yeah, have you seen him? Uh, yeah, I saw him today doing stuff with the right, so he's getting better. Okay. Is a team like Miami consistent with fine guys, you know, second round picks, undrafted, build their team with a lot of those guys? Do you see that as maybe like a model for what you guys are going through? <laughs> <coughs> well, <clears throat> I've always had a lot of respect for Miami, for Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra and, uh, and Andy, and, and just the way they run their organization. Uh, Mickey Harrison. You know, they've been through everything. They've been through a 15 win season and they've been through four straight trips to the finals. And, you know, their approach never changes in terms of, um, you know, who they are. They're, they're always competitive, they're always tough. They're
defensive minded. And part of that is um, player development. Um, you can't keep that identity unless you're teaching your young players uh, really how to compete and, and how to defend. And so they've done a great job um, uh, with their draft picks, with their free agency uh, trades. Myers Leonard's playing great this year. Uh, picking up a guy like Duncan Robinson as a free agent, Kendrick Nunn. I mean, they, they're, um, their whole program is rock solid. They're one of the best franchises in the league. And, uh, you know, it's, I have a lot of respect for them. How much of, like, making the most out of players who like to draft this? How much of it do you think is player development versus just, like, good scouting and just, like, picking the right guys? Uh, it's, <laughs> I think it's... I don't know how to put a number on it. It's There's always both, you know. Um, a player has to have uh, the right attributes to become a, a good pro, and then the, the coaching staff and management has to do a good job raising that, that player right and, and giving him the, the tools to succeed. So it's a group effort. You're a probable or questionable for tonight? I'm, I've been moved to probable, yeah. yeah the, the pain has been debilitating, but, um, you know, I'm a fighter, so... Probable at this point. Where you like the player that can go off against the team that didn't pick him up? Do I have, do I ever worry about it? Yeah, it seems to be like a thing. Like, it, it is a thing, you know. I played on six different teams in the NBA, so almost every year I was playing against somebody that you know I had just played for the previous year. You always you know, get extra excited. And, uh, you, you get. You know, motivation, you get energy, and uh, I don't know if that applies here um, because uh, you know Kendrick never really got a chance with with our uh, with our with the Golden State Warriors. He, he was great with, with Santa Cruz, but if anything, it's proof that the system is working. You know, he was uh, did a great job in Santa Cruz, and then Miami recognized it and brought him up. I'm just happy for him and. Hopefully he doesn't go crazy tonight. Yeah. But, uh,